For your viewing pleasure, this broadcast of the Municipal Council Meeting of Alpena is made possible by the funding provided by the City of Alpena. Thank you for your generosity. Welcome to the Alpena City Council meeting on March 21st, 2016. Call the order, please. Johnson? Here. Nielsen? Here. Nowak? Here. Sexton? And Wallagora? Here. Councilman Sexton is ill this evening. Advance notice. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, any modifications to the agenda this evening? Um, had an opportunity to read the minutes from regular session of March 7th, 2016 and closed session of March 7th, 2016. Any issues, corrections? Citizens appearing before council on agenda and non-agenda items are allowed five minutes each to address your concerns. If you do so, please come to the podium and state your name and address for our records. This is the only time during our meeting this evening that we'll take public comment. Good evening, council mayor. Uh, my name is Chuck Minkuski, live at 615A Street and uh, uh, last week, Wednesday, I had an opportunity to go out to the Huron Humane Society, and that Woodward Avenue corridor is in bad, bad shape. Now, I contacted the county first, and they referred me to the city. They said it's city property. It's ours, yeah. So, my concern is, when I drove in the driveway, I thought my truck was going to get washed away by the water flowing over the top of the driveway. There mailbox was four feet out or four feet uh, the water was four feet out into the road from their mailbox they could not even walk to their mailbox they had to use a vehicle to get into their mailbox and the water was flowing right down the side of the, the road because the ditch was filled I mean there is no ditch there basically all the culverts there are in bad repair or need of, or need of bad repair so I would like to find out why nothing has ever been done because I talked to Natalie from the Humane Society she said this is like this every spring and nobody ever does anything about it I see the city does have a couple of cones out there now but there's no water flowing now and that road needs to be graded badly thank you okay thanks Chuck and I saw that Rich was taking a lot of notes while you were talking, so it did not fall on deaf ears. Uh, anyone else this evening? <coughs> Excuse me. The consent agenda A is bills to be allowed in the amount of $343,183.99. B is one city council reappointment to the city of Alpena building authority for a three year term expiring March 21st, 2019 is Greg Sundin. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Nielsen? Yes. Nowak? Yes. Walgora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Thank you. Okay, nothing on down to uh, proclamations. I have one this evening, Social Host Responsibility Month, being April. April 2016 is Social Host Responsibility Month. 
Whereas adults who provide alcohol to those below the legal drinking age of 21 are placing those youth at risk for health, safety, and legal problems. <coughs> and whereas underage drinking is a problem that affects our community, our health, and our future, it, it exacts a terrible toll on individuals and families and places a costly tax burden on the community at large for law enforcement, medical services, and other social services involved in the prevention and treatment of underage drinking. And whereas the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that on average alcohol is a factor in the deaths of 4,358 young people under, under age 21 each year. This includes 1,580 deaths from motor vehicle crashes, 1,269 from homicides, 245 from alcohol poisoning, falls, burns, and drowning, and 492 from suicides. And whereas youth who start drinking before age 15 years are five times more likely to develop alcohol dependence or abuse later in life than those who begin drinking at, at or after 21 years. And whereas according to the 2012 Michigan Profile for Healthy Youth Report of 14 counties of northern Michigan who participated an average of 26% of ninth grader and 52% of 11th graders have been drunk in their lifetime. And whereas 100% of any alcohol consumed by a minor came from an adult, at one time an adult over the age of 21 was in control of the alcohol and a minor gained access to it, and whereas it is illegal for adults to knowingly allow their child's friends to drink alcohol in their home, even with the permission of their friend's parents, and adults have the authority and should have the responsibility to take steps to reduce the likelihood that their homes will be, uh, become venues for underage drinking. And now, therefore, it be resolved that we, the council members of the city of Alpena and community are committed to underage drinking prevention, do hereby proclaim that April 2016 is Social Host Responsibility Month. We also call on all parents, citizens, homeowners, and property owners to gather, to host gatherings responsibly and take measures to eliminate <coughs> excess to alcohol to persons under the age of 21. And this evening, I'm joined by Donna Hardis. to um, give you a yard sign to just make individuals aware this along with the proclamation in April we have out in the communities um, to just remind parents especially with prom being in April and graduation time coming up that it's something we all need to be vigilant about and Joel I have a uh, sign for you to go you know for the public safety building but thank you very much for your support Thanks. Would you like to yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No public hearings. Next up is a report of officers. This is the revised proposed amendment to the Thunder Bay Transportation Authority Articles of Incorporation. Well, I'm back. <laughs> First time didn't, was not the term, so hopefully it'll be the second, don't have to do this a third. Uh, back in February, on February 15th, Council approved an amendment to the Thunder Bay Transportation Authority Articles of Incorporation regarding residency for board members. Any proposed change of the articles must be approved by each of the legislative bodies of the four incorporating entities, which are Alpena County, Alcona County, Montmorency County, and the City of Alpena. Uh, after the city had approved uh, the, uh, the proposed change, the Alcona County Board of Commissioners rejected it, uh, citing a concern that it could result in three of the seven TBTA board members residing outside the service area. Although not in agreement with the Alcona Board's concerns, 
Uh, to prevent further delays, the TBTA board agreed to modify the amendment to allow only one of the three at-large members to reside outside the service area so long as he or she worked within it. The attached revised amendment reflects this change. To date, Alcona did pass this change, and I was also told Mount Lorenzi did, and the uh, uh, Alpena County Board will take it up on November, or uh, March 29th, which uh, is their next board meeting. So at this point uh, time, uh, again asking council to uh, approve the amendment, which basically adds the language and reads as follows, that member of the board must be at least 18 years of age and residents of Thunder Bay service area with the exception of those three additional board members appointed by the incorporating board members. One of these representatives may be a resident outside the service area if they are employed in the Thunder Bay service area. And that would be the change. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I move we uh, approve the revised amendment to the Thunder Bay Transportation and Hercules Incorporation. Second. Nowak? Yes. Walagora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. All right. Thank you, Greg. Communications and petitions. First up, we have uh, Detective Lieutenant Stuart Sharp from the Here and Undercover Narcotics Team. He's the commander. Annual report and budget request. each one of you with a copy of uh, the report that you can look through. It has uh, our significant activity and our funding sources. And I'm not sure uh, how many people are familiar with Hunt. Uh, we're funded by uh, local entities, uh, the state police, and a burn JAG grant that I, I write every year. That grant has uh, decreased significantly over the last three or four years. Last year, a 20% decrease in our funding. Uh, Along with the uh, annual report, I provided my budget that I prepared for 15 and 16. And as you're all well aware, that your fiscal year ends in July, begins in July. Ours is uh, consistent with the state police, so that's October, September, October. You have been funding uh, Hunt at a, an amount of $8,000 uh, per year since 2015. And previous to that, uh, you're at $7,500. Each entity is uh, asked to put their fair share in, and that, that fair share isn't uh, figured out until the budget is calculated. And this year, that amount was $14,924. Uh, you contributed $8,000. Uh, in addition to the officer that uh, Joel Jett provides to the team, so that the, you have the wages and, and uh, man hours there. So what I'm asking for this year, in particular, this fiscal year, is an increase of $6,924. I'm not able to uh, estimate what next year's will be, uh, but I would be happy with that amount of $14,924 as being an annual amount. That uh, kind of brings me to the point of the annual report. 40% of our investigations are conducted within the city of Alpena. Now keep in mind that we operate in Presqu'ile, Alcona, Alpena County, and Mount Renzi County. With that said, 40% are conducted in the city of Alpena. 36% are in the county of Alpena. 21% are in the remaining three county areas. And then we have about 3% that are outside of our coverage areas. We assist some other agency or we, for whatever reason, leave our, our assigned area. And that's on page three of the annual report. On page four, you'll find that 52% of our arrests, we made 127 arrests last year, 52% were in the city of Alpena, 35% were in the county of Alpena, 7% were in the remaining three counties, and 6% were outside of our coverage area. With that being said, the majority of our work stems from the largest metropolitan area within our, our region. Most of the uh, illegal drugs and legal drugs that are being illegally diverted uh, come from the city of Alpena. 
and they generate like fingers outside of the city of Alpine. We ask that the other entities uh, pony up that amount and I'm here to ask you to pony up that amount because you receive the majority of the services. Now we can talk statistics all night long but really the only statistic I want is zero. I don't want any overdoses this next year and I don't want to be able to surreptitiously purchase heroin or opiates on the street. So that's what my intent is. I had said when I took the team over in July that I wasn't going to be uh, loud or I wasn't going to be the one you know, beating my own drum. I was going to show what I did. In the back of the annual report is significant activity and you can look over some of the things and I'm sure that you've uh, seen it in the newspaper and heard it on the, the radio. We've been uh, very effective in opiates. Most recently, methamphetamine, which is being produced and has been produced in the city of Alpine. And the diversion of pills. The diversion of pills is if I get a prescription legally and it's an opioid, uh, I sell that to you illegally, thusly diverting my legal script. That is generally the cause of uh, heroin addiction in America right now. I don't know if it's appropriate to ask you if you have questions for me. But. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, you know, if you're available for questions, uh, we have had some in the past. Um, I don't particularly have any at this point. I mean, I'll take a little bit of time and, and take a look at the um, at your annual report. I think we all understand the there was some email traffic about the fiscal years overlapping, but they always have, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. But yeah. just so um, just so I understand the for our budget this year will be are we looking to an additional eight thousand for your current my for your current the, fiscal year? My request for this year would be six thousand nine twenty four. Uh, however, but we're late in the year. For your this and year or for our this year? <laughs> for your this year. <laughs> for our this which, year. Which kinda of translates to my right. this year, right? Okay. It does. Mine ends in October, yours is, ends in July. Okay. So yeah. that that additional amount would fund, you know, in theory, through our October monies. Is that right? Does that clear that but up? That, yeah. That clears that up, and then what do we do for next year for our? Yeah, for our well, our fiscal year ends in July, and we had eight thousand ending right. July one, yep. and then now you're really not asking for you're asking for fourteen thousand nine twenty four right. for our fiscal next year. Next fiscal yes. Okay. For, yes. Okay. And again, I I ask that amount because I I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what my grant, my federal grant, could be reduced by another twenty percent. In, in actuality, I, I foresee that grant disappearing in the very near future. Opiates are what's destroying America right now. And the Burn Jag grant, you know, uh, came into fruition from some activities in New York where two undercover officers were killed. And federal monies were directed towards uh, the interdiction of drugs. And predominantly back in the 80s, it was marijuana. And now it's predominantly opiates. Opioids are destroying America. Legal opiates, being your oxycontin, oxycodone, lead to heroin use and abuse, and fentanyl and things that are a thousand times more more potent than heroin are ingested intravenously, and we end up with overdose deaths. So that's kind of the progression. That's a very simple way for me to put it. But the the priority for our team and the priority for the state of Michigan is opiates pill diversion and methamphetamine at this point. I need funding, I need professional officers, and I need a fully staffed team to, to combat those things. Okay. It's not the marijuana from the 1980s. It's, it's highly uh, corrosive, uh, very aggressive drugs, and they're causing deaths. And, and not to mention the other crimes associated that they have to commit to feed their habits. Okay. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. <clears throat> Under your funding sources on page eight mm -hmm. for 2015, what is that? What does that time period does that cover? Uh, that's our fiscal year. Okay. Because you got the city of Alpena at 35,000. Well, that and was, uh, if I, I'm not trying to interrupt yeah. you, but no, that was no. me. That's including officer wages, and that's a proration because we only had a city officer for, I believe, four months. 
I think it's okay. four months that we had a city officer. Okay. And there's other years that were substantially higher, okay. but we had an officer for a full year. Okay. So hopefully this next year we'll have an officer for the full year. Okay. That's, uh, Chief Jed is very supportive of the team, and I appreciate that. He always sends the best officers to us. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I just That's wanted to make sure we understood what he was looking for for our budget year. Yep. Right now. It's kind of a wish list on this year. Certainly. Okay. <coughs> well, thank you very much. You. Detective you. Lieutenant. We don't. No, we'll put these in the minutes, but there will be no action until the budget. We'll the budget. Excellent. Next up, uh, here in Humane Society, annual report and budget request. Oh, can you pick up on that? Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 I was told to present the budget and answer any questions. Uh, I believe you all received a copy of our budget and our budget request for the year. We're asking for an increase from 14000 to 20000 for this coming year. The majority of our calls are in the city of Alpena, which is partly why we're asking for an increase. And is it my understanding that this amount that we gotten from the city hasn't been changed in a number of years. In the past year, obviously, we know about our most notorious cases, um, which was in the county, and the more recent case over on Avery Street. We've, uh, fortunately for us, last year, we projected a, a quite a substantial deficit, and thanks to the kindness of a very generous donor, we were able to end the year in the positive. And we, by reducing expenses and the generosity of fundraising, we are projecting, again, a deficit for this year, but not anywhere near what we did last year. We're projecting a $4,200 deficit. And I think probably from fundraising and donations, we should be able to make that up. Obviously, you don't plan to, to lose money, but in this situation where we're dependent on donations, it is tough to try to project where you're going to end up. Um, that's all I have to express. Can I? Um, yeah, because I'm sorry, I was just reading, so you want to? Um, would you be able to provide to staff if, so when we are preparing our budget, you mentioned in terms of the number, you know, that a majority of your calls are within the city. Do you have a breakdown of those statistics or does the staff that they could provide those in terms of, you know, how many calls are in the city as compared to, let's say, Alpena Township and then the, the rest of the county, things of that sort? I'll see if that's available. I think the record's kept to that effect. Mm -hmm. I have to apologize. So I've only been the treasurer for a year, sure. so I'm not as familiar with the inner workings of the organization as to answer a lot of questions. But I will get with Natalie Francis, the okay. director, and, and put together some information for you. Okay, appreciate it. You can just get that, have her send it to Karen. Okay. It would be fine. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that was my only question. Everything <coughs> else is clear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, next up, Jim Clarich, Target Director, Annual Report and Budget Request as well. Uh, was that actually our annual report. Um, I'm a little bit behind my time, so I'm uh, on the actual try to do the quarterly report as of February 1st. Um, I guess I'll start by, uh, um, and I'll see, we continue and consistently um, to post the lowest un unemployment rates in the uh, region. Uh, we were at 5.1 percent in January. I believe our reported unemployment rates in uh, uh, were 6.0 percent uh, unemployment in, uh, fe in February. Um, we officially took ownership of the Alpena Power Company building on January 7th. Uh, the Phase Two environmental survey uh, is complete, um, and the appropriate paperwork was sent into the state on February 22nd. 
Um, I believe Adam right now is uh, at the city is preparing um, to send out the bids for a demolition that could happen um, as early as this week. Um, and we continue to, uh, to hold discussions with uh, developers. And uh, we remain confident that a high impact redevelopment solution will present itself in the near future. Uh, extensions of our business development efforts um, continue to produce results. Um, the development, new development, and the redevelopment projects uh, recently announced throughout Alpena um, speak to that. Uh, I think this spring and this summer, uh, one will really be able to visualize the impact um, in and around the community um, as large amounts of properties will be going on, going through some amount of um, construction or reconstruction. We're also uh, uh, very aggressively seeking um, buyers for the uh, the ATI facility. Um, we probably approached uh, I'm somewhere north of 200 companies so far um, nationwide, uh, it's looking to get that uh, building uh, reutilized and turned back on. Uh, and we're also uh, working with uh, the API group um, to, uh, to revitalize the uh, facility behind uh, Decker panels. Our small business development center um, counseling activity um, has rebounded a little bit um, during that quarter. Uh, total clients, um, we're still, we're, I reported 100, we're a little bit north of that now. Contact prep hours were 477, new business starts three, jobs created 11, capital formation at 605,000. Uh, specific to the city, as of February 1st, we had uh, 43 clients, 217 counseling hours, one business start, four jobs, and about 260,000 in capital formation. Um, in the report that I gave you, um, we showed uh, in there one small, one new small business loan this quarter. Um, we are, we 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 did uh, complete that, um, and we also have two more in queue as of today. Um, and we've negotiated settlements on a few bad loan debts that we were carrying for quite some time, so those are behind us. Uh, we continue to uh, represent Alpena uh, on the Michigan Economic Development uh, Corporation's Aerospace Work Group, which is charged with packaging the uh, state's aerospace assets, um, and it'll be used in an attraction strategy um, for the entire state. But obviously with the assets that we have here in our area, I think it's important for us to, be, uh, to participate in that. Uh, we're supposed to have a meeting, I think, later this week with the uh, Spring snow may uh, preempt that. Um, we continue to uh, participate in um, our, our Region 3 CDC activities uh, through NEMCOG, which is focused on regional collaboration, and our business development outreach efforts uh, and partnerships with commercial real estate brokers uh, continue in earnest, and we've made a lot of coordinated presentations uh, and supplied follow-up in, in information to um, both site selectors as well as uh, commercial customers um, throughout the area. Uh, I uh, want to thank you for your continued support. Um, if there's anything uh, that you guys have questions on pertaining to the report, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, um, and I'll jump in and uh, I'll jump into the budget request and say um, we're all aware, everyone um, is aware of financial stress that most local, uh, local units of government um, are facing. But we respectfully request that you uh, look favor favorably on extending our contract through 2017 and the $40,000 uh, investment that you put towards us. Um, we're excited about the progress that we've made in uh, 15 and 16 and uh, we'll continue to provide unparalleled value to the city of Alpena. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No question? No, no. Okay. I already talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, next up, Alpena Wildlife Sanctuary Board, annual report and budget request as well. Adam? All right. Um, good evening. I'll let Roger handle the highlights of the annual report here shortly. I'll just uh, run through the budget request real quick, and I'll turn it over to Raj. Um, <coughs> attached to their following reports for the budget request uh, for the City of Alpena Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, as mentioned, Roger will come talk about that. One of the principal accomplishments of the Wildlife Sanctuary Board uh, this, this last year was, was the completion of the feasibility study for the proposed River Center, uh, which indicates that commu with community support, the, the River Center is not only feasible to construct, but also to operate. Uh, the River Center Steering Committee is in the process of forming a 501c3, which will aid in our fundraising efforts. The committee is looking at a number of grant opportunities that would assist in the construction of the River Center, but nearly all of these grants require a significant local match. Although the board has been um, been successful at fundraising in the past through events such as the Real Fun Ice Fishing Tournament and the Real Fun Festivus Dinner, as well as other planned uh, planned events for this year, additional funding sources are needed to accrue an acceptable uh, local match. 
The board would ask if the city would consider setting aside funding to be utilized for matching funds for a construction <coughs> grant this year and potentially subsequent years to assist in the construction of the River Center. Uh, the board is aware that of the financial constraints of the city and appreciates the consideration from the council. And the, the board and many other uh, community partners feel that the construction of the River Center would not, would not only be a tremendous asset to the community, both in forms of education, uh, both in forms of an educational opportunity for all ages, but a public attraction as well. Um, again, the board appreciates both public and financial support the city council has given over the years and looks forward to uh, future support. So I'll, at this point, I'll turn it over to Raj. You can touch on what the conference will last year. Thank you very much. Adam's covered most of what I was going to cover anyway, so any questions? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just real, real quickly, the, the sanctuary, which is the ward, which is appointed by you folks, uh, continues to work on maintaining uh, the natural area, that 500 acre natural area and the island. And that was uh, established in an agreement in 1985 with the Michigan Land Trust that it be used as a quiet uh, recreation and environmental education for, for environmental education. And one of the concerns that the board has, has had is, is the quiet recreation part of that. There's been a lot of people or a number of folks that aren't staying on the trails and as a result we're getting a lot of erosion and that's a very fragile island so we're continuing to work in that particular area but we need to work on that. The committee also did a revision of the uh, island management plan and if you want to take a look at that you can get hold of that but it's they did an excellent job with that this year much more thorough and they set some uh, stringent goals that they plan to work on and, and uh, working on that. The other thing that we've been working very closely with here in Pines, and they've done some grant writing, and we have a couple of major projects worked, uh, being, being worked out or will be worked on this summer on the island and in the sanctuary, and there's some frog bit poles and things like that. But they're involved, in the grant writing that they're, they're involved with us is not only just for the sanctuary, but for the city also. There will be other areas in the city that here in Pines is going to get involved in. Uh, we continue to work on the educational programming. We in, in, encourage schools to use the, the island and the sanctuary, and we have classrooms out there that we help coordinate different activities and set up stations for them to work on. The River Rats program, which you know about, uh, is really going to be expanded this year. We've got a number of different agencies helping with uh, Alice Holcomb and, and Melissa Dobek are the two that got that thing started, and it's just growing. To where it's too big for them and so we've got a number of different we met a couple weeks ago and i was just really pleased with the enthusiasm and the energy that some of these other organizations want to help and get involved in and that's going to grow so that that particular program is just awesome and we get a lot of comments from parents that come kids when they come to that program they have to be accompanied by an adult 100% of the adults say I learned more than my kid did. I think, you know, it's really, really kind of fun. The River Center, um, uh, Adam talked about the feasibility study, and, and of course that was very positive, and we want to continue to move along with that. The fundraising, we'll, we'll start doing some um, activities this, this summer with for fundraising, and those should be um, not only fun, but educational in nature, too. And, uh, uh, we do have a, a, an active steering committee for the River Center, and um, they're, they've been working on just a variety of different things, the articulation and those kinds of things. Fundraising, we're going to continue to work on that. Adam mentioned the uh, real fun ice fishing term. I received more calls this year than I ever had. We sold all of our tickets, 1,000 tickets. I received more, and all the calls, that I say 95% of the calls that I received were from downstate or out of state. <coughs> and a lot of them were, where can I stay when I come to Alpena? And, and we've been getting a lot of support from the Chamber of Commerce and, and uh, our, our top sponsor, Top of Michigan, just did a great job for us. So, um, but, uh, uh, you know, our future plans, uh, we want to finalize our business plan and and deal with the articles of incorporation and bylaws and 501c3. That stuff will all be dealt with here by the end of this month. And um, we're just going to continue to work towards building that, that 
uh, interpreter center and continue to work on maintaining the <coughs> island, which is our main charge. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. All right, uh, next up, unfinished business. This is the second readings, reading, readings, the second reading of ordinance number 16434, an ordinance amending chapter 14 buildings and building regulations, article two, building code section 14-31. This is with council policy. This will not be read again unless one of you wishes me to do so. I simply need a, a vote yes or no. <coughs> Or yay or nay, if you prefer. Would you like me to read it? Sure, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that. You wrote a very nice word for us. Yeah. yeah. It's not that long. But. Uh, so with, uh, this evening, we're looking to place that ordinance. Uh, basically allowed, uh, I believe, plumbing and mechanical now. We've been doing electrical for, I'm not sure how many years Four now. Years. Four years. And certainly, will, I mean, from the public standpoint, there are a lot of people that have been waiting around to get their inspections done, and this will certainly speed that along, so it'll be helpful. Uh, it's, it's definitely needed. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I move we approve uh, ordinance number, and my computer just went down 16. 434. Four, 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 four. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it just flipped up. Second. Walagora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Noah? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Bill. And Don? Uh, new business is the contract modification with Meridian Contracting <coughs> Services for $11,642 to replace the soffit system at the public safety facility. Well, just like when I walk into public safety, miss me? <laughs> Most of them say no. Um, on October 12, 2015, bids were opened for the public safety roof and soft replacement. Due to concerns of cost, the bids were requested as line items specific to each phase of the project. Subsequently, the bid was awarded to Meridian Contracting Services on October 20, 2015, less two of the line items, notably the flat roof area replacement and the soft replacement. With re recent review of the construction fund balance, it's noticed that there is a balance of $104,800. Meridian has started the roof repair project with their bid of $85,638. That will leave a pro projected fund balance of $19,162. The line item to replace the existing SOFA system was $11,642, which Meridian Contracting is willing to honor. We also will be looking to replace some of the existing soffit lighting that was damaged or out of date with new efficient LED lighting. The city will be purchasing and installing these fixtures in conjunction with the soffit replacement. This will be the appropriate and opportune time to do so. Um, I like to try to make our motions count. Some of the lights were damaged from the water and ice and they aren't real efficient lamps and so rather than put the new soffit system in and go back and then look at replacing the lamps now's the time to do that it is my recommendation as the assistant city building official that we authorize a change work order for replacement of the soffit system at the public public safety facility for meridian contracting services for the sum of eleven thousand six hundred and forty two dollars <coughs> Uh, Mike, and that includes the lights, or that comes from a different fund? The lights will come from a different fund. Uh, looking at our, where we're at right now, and I've been talking with Karen a little bit, um, our, our um, ma building maintenance and repairs are sitting fairly decent with because uh, we haven't had as many repair cost bills with uh, where we sit right now on the uh, on, on those in the. Uh, and those budget line items for building maintenance and repairs. So we're looking at just replacing the ones that are damaged right now, and we're looking at about $3,000 worth of lamps at this point. So I'm currently getting prices on those yet, and um, but we'll be looking at them. Hopefully, we can just take it out of the building maintenance and repairs that we have left in the budget. But I've got to look. We've got to look at that budget item. Okay. So. Any 
questions or an approval? I move that we authorize a change work order for replacement of the soccer system at the public uh, safety facility through Meridian Contracting. Second. Johnson? Yes. Nielsen? Yes. Noah? Yes. Walzora? Aye. Mike? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last thing is an aerial lift truck purchase from Alpina Power Company. Just, just an unsolicited comment in front of that. I've personally would like to thank Mike for taking over those responsibilities that he's done. Um, I think it's working out very well. Uh, he's he's committing the time to it that the rest of the staff certainly didn't. And um, Mike's not afraid to jump in and do a lot of that stuff himself. So I just really appreciate it from staff standpoint. Um, basically, we, we've been in discussion with Alpena Power Company for the last couple of years uh, about possibly acquiring one of their aerial uh, bucket trucks uh, when they retire. And they actually get two that were coming out of service, one last year and then one this year. We looked at the one last year and it didn't really fit our needs, so we didn't pursue it. Um, it was subsequently sold locally to one of the local tree companies. but. Um, when they notified us again this year that they had a, another truck coming up for uh, to get rid of, dispose of, they, they contacted us and we went over and we took a look at it. Uh, Sean McNamara, our DBW division head, and Doug Brzezowski, our lead mechanic, uh, went over, evaluated it as far as will it fit our needs and perform the services we want. And then Doug went through it, uh, looked at it mechanically, talked to their mechanic um, and felt that it was in good shape. I mean, right now, our bucket trucks are 1986 and they've got about, one's got 46,000, one's got 53,000. So they don't get a lot of miles on them. Um, but they get, when we, we need them, uh, we, we usually have both of them out. Um, the truck that we're looking yeah. at has about 140,000 miles. They travel, obviously the Alpena Power Company travels a lot more. Um, but it is in good mechanical shape. Um, Sean uh, discussed this with Alpita Power and negotiated a price of $12,000 to purchase that, which is about seven to $10,000 less than what one typically sells for on the secondary market. So uh, Alpita Power is giving us a good price on this. Um, right now, uh, we do not have, this was not budgeted. We, didn't, we weren't sure it was going to become available or uh, what the cost was going to be. Uh, but we do have funding available. We, we budgeted um, $144,000 to rehabilitate the two trucks. Our original estimate to rehabilitate our two dump trucks was about $70,000. When they got into them, we actually found out it was about $95,000 to refurbish the first one. So we obviously aren't going to be able to afford this, to do the second one this fiscal year. So we've re, we're reprogramming that, reprogramming that for next year's budget. So that funding would, just, would be freed up, and we could use a portion of that, the $12,000, to make this purchase, and then the balance would be carried over. Basically, Karen, her, with her control stick, keeps me at about $200,000 a year for equipment fund purchases. If we're light one year, we can carry it over and use it the next year. So that would be our target. Uh, so it's my request and recommendation to City Council that we be authorized to acquire the uh, aerial bucket truck from uh, Alpena Power Company for the amount of $12,000. This, one of the questions that was posed today to me was, what do we need to do to it? Um, basically, I've got a tire on the front that's below wear standard, so we're going to replace that. We've got some, we've got a little bit of rust in the box of the truck that we're going to uh, patch up. Uh, right now it's Alpena Power Company yellow. Uh, it'll probably stay that way for the balance of this year while we get it in use. Then we're going to look at what our cost would be to get it painted, our standard city green color, uh, following that. Rich, can you remind us uh, what a cost of a new truck like this was? Because you guys have been working pretty hard and uh, looking for something to use and nothing needs. So, 
Actually, you know, we have it in our CIP for I think three years out, and they're two hundred and eighty thousand dollars a piece to buy a brand new one. So um, that by two hundred thousand dollars, I would have to scrimp and save for a little while to be able to afford those, or we would have gone into some type of a lease purchase long term, which would have reduced our, our available funding in future years. So this is a um, this is a. A good step, and I think that you know, if we can get 10, 12, 14 years out of it, you know, and we we can continue this. Alpina Power Company's been a great partner, uh, we work very closely with them on a number of different issues. I mean, they set our Christmas tree every year, so it's just been a good partnership, and, and they've been very supportive <coughs> in the city. And this is just annual cycle of the fire it's, it was their scheduled replacement. They, when we talked to them a couple of years ago, they said, you know, we've got two coming up, one this year and one the following year. So it's just their standard replacement. And actually, the guys over there keep wanting to go back to this truck. They like this truck better than the other one they just bought. So. If, if something should happen that the repairs on this truck and just, keep, just keeping it running um, should be more or the truck should be not as valuable as you think what would you do then what's the next step i mean basically the, the the trucks got the same engine as our other trucks same frame as our other trucks same it's a uh, international uh, chassis mm -hmm. so that the guys the mechanics over there are used to working on these so they can keep them going fairly easy. we stock all the repair parts etc for them but if it was one of those situations where we got into it and i'm down the road the frame was cracked. The boom, the boom on it, mm -hmm. would certainly be worth that. Which the aerial boom on it was was certified. They have to be certified every year to be able to use them for to, for people to go up in them. They're certified every year, and helping the power company had this <coughs> certified this year, so it's in good shape. Good. Good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I hate to pass up a good deal, so it, it seems like the appropriate thing to do. To me, I don't really have an issue with it. Did you say what you're going to do with your current lift truck? Are you retiring it or just storing it for now? Or? Probably for for this year, we'll probably just park it out back and store it. And um, you're not in any rush to get rid of it. No, it's 1965 doesn't get a lot, of, or 1985 doesn't get a lot of miles on it. So right. Okay. Excellent. And will we approve the? Second. Second. Nielsen? Yes. Noah? Yes. Walgora? Aye. Johnson? Yes. Thank you, Rich. You are watching All About Alpino. Oh. Um.